Hello everyone, my name is Vladimir Cherepanov. I work for NVIDIA in Deep Learning Frameworks MXNet team. And today I'm going to talk about MXNet AMP, Automatic Mixed Precision. First, very brief refresher why we want to do AMP. Because some operations, uh, they don't need full precision. And uh, with their inputs being cast to uh, a half precision, they actually uh, are much faster. And also they take advantage of specialized hardware, which itself uh, is internally mixed precision. AMP implementation uh, typically involves three steps. The first one is we need to partition the entire computation into half and full uh, precision regions. We do it with AMP casting. The second step is we need to keep master copy of weights in FP32. And the last one, we need to do loss scaling. Every operation in MaxNet is classified depending on its precision requirement in either of those lists. FP16 FUNCS list collects operations which actually benefits from their inputs being cast to FP16. FP32 FUNCS collects operations uh, which require either uh, FP32 range or FP32 mantissa. Then we have a set of operations which may not care as much about precision, but they take multiple inputs and those inputs need to be of the same type, simply for correctness reasons. And finally, FP16, FP32 FUNCS list is out there only uh, to ensure coverage, to make sure that every operation is classified one way or another. And here uh, on this small uh, model fragment, I can show you how AMP casting works. We have three operations and we have uh, three variables here. We have convolution operation, which is in FP16 FUNCS list. We have a flatten operation, which is in FP16, FP32 lists, and concatenate operation, which is in widest type cast list. And that's pretty much exactly how uh, AMP casting is performed according to those lists. We can see that uh, both input to convolution, they are cast to FP16 using AMP cast operations. Nothing uh, specific is being done for flatten operation. And inputs to concatenate operation, they are being passed through AMP multicast, which ensures that uh, those inputs are of the same type and that they are cast to widest type. The second step is uh, keeping a master copy of weights in FP32. Uh, we have this multi-precision option in optimizer class which does exactly that and that's as much as i want to talk about this step right now finally loss scaling why do we need it i borrowed this picture from nvidia docs because it shows very well why we can see that some gradients they can become pretty small while still uh, being significant and important for optimization process in fact, they are so small as they are not representable in FP16 range. They are indistinguishable from zero. At the same time, uh, you see that on the right side of this picture, we have a lot of unused bits. So ideally, we want to kind of shift this histogram to the right. And that's exactly what uh, loss scaling does. Now, uh, we can some model can be trained with a fixed uh, scale, loss scale. Uh, but even different models may require different scales and even one model can need this uh, loss scale to be adjusted as training progresses for example as gradients become smaller so that's why ideally we want to handle it automatically how do we do that uh, we do it with this by sensing gradients at the parameter update stage so initially we set scale to some large number like uh, 64k and then we keep decreasing it while gradients overflow. And then as the training progresses, uh, if we observed that uh, there were no overflows for a number of iterations, for example, for 2000 iterations, we adjust, uh, we, we increase our loss scale. And that works uh, pretty well most of the time. Most of the time, but not always. Sometimes uh, something strange happens. 
sometimes we launch a training and we see that low scale just vanishes it goes to zero that doesn't look good does it so what's going on in order to find out we can add some ad hoc instrumentation which modifies ops to print stats about all input and output tensors so let's add that and launch the training again we see some output here let's scroll back a bit to see it from the beginning so we can see that uh, there are two ops produced tensors with non finite values they are dumped with the bold font here uh, the first one uh, with predictor in its name uh, produces some ifs uh, the second one with extractor in its name produces some nans some non-finite gradients are detected as a consequence now let's see how these values change as we decrease loss scale still there so uh looks like inf values in the output of the first op in question go away as expected really this is what should happen as we scale down the loss but none values in outputs of the second op with extractor in its name are still there no matter how small we are making loss scale and since non-finite gradients are detected at the weight update stage we keep scaling down and down So, what's going on? Well, bugs, of course, that's what's going on. It turns out, in this particular case, uh, uh, one operation had a bug. Or rather, a library used by this operation had a bug in calculating a uh, bias gradient. So, no matter how small we would have made this low scale, those nuns uh, in some tensors uh, would never have disappeared. So, I just wanted to mention this uh, vanishing low scale problem, because uh, if you use AMP more, you are bound to encounter it uh, one day or another. And uh, more likely than not, uh, it is caused by something, some already existing numerical problem in a model. AMP just exposes it. Well, on, a, on a slightly less serious note, one can think of automatic loss scaling as a canary in a coal mine for numerical problems in a model. But unfortunately, AMP has uh, some very specific problem I wanted to talk about. Uh, it is excessive memory consumption in recursive neural networks. Those are the type of networks which can reuse uh, a single parameter, single weight, uh, many, many times uh, by uh, different RNN cells. And in each, uh, for each such use, uh, we currently create a separate AMP cast operation, which obviously takes uh, memory. So generally, we know how to approach it. We want to implement uh, sort of caching for results of those casts, but uh, we still yet to implement it. But enough of bad things. Let's talk about something good. And this good, of course, is performance, uh, because the whole point of uh, using AMP is to make our models train faster. So uh, those are just some uh, benchmarking I've done lately, uh, and uh, the absolute values are probably meaningless. I just want to compare uh, in pairs uh, kind of numbers with AMP and without AMP. So those are numbers that likely uh, that you also like to encounter uh, uh, when you start to use AMP. And we, we want to uh, make AMP even faster. Uh, one of such uh, possibility is automatic layout management. So some background uh, is that uh, some operations, convolutions and deconvolutions are much faster 
in NHWC layout compared to NCHW uh, when they are executed on tensor cores. But since historically flow 32 calculations prefer NCHW layout, it is desirable to handle those layout changes automatically depending on the amp setting. So if you if you use amp, you use one layout. If you don't use amp, you probably want to use another layout. And it turns out that the layout change itself can be performed with a single graph pass by changing attributes of certain ops and inserting transposers here and there. In fact, uh, we already implemented this thing in our container, but yet we we are yet to upstream it. And this is the final slide. Uh, so the the recent development in AMP uh, in MXNet is that in MXNet 2.0, AMP has been moved from Contrib into Core, along with some minor fixes and improvements. And another thing is that uh, NumPy ops have been AMP enabled in MXNet 2.0. And we also received a number of uh, feature requests uh, or kind of internal uh, wishes. One of them, it has been suggested to implement AMP casts uh, with a graph pass. So it's arguably a cleaner design. On the other hand, it may uh, introduce numerical inconsistencies between a hybridized and imperative mode of execution. That's why it's still uh, up for discussion. Another uh, wish uh, was to uh, to add ability to turn and AMP on and off on demand, possibly with a context, Python context manager. That that we, this is also something we will look into, I think. And that's it. That's all I wanted to talk about today. Thank you for listening.